Hey everyone, it's Marvin again, and welcome to episode 7 of our online tutorial series for YouTube. And in this episode, we're going to talk about ReMA's embeddables. And embeddables are a huge part of ReMA's and the entire customer service experience because it refers to uh, actually several different things. The first one is the embeddable live chat widget. Uh, some people call it the ReMA's chat, uh, chat box. Some people call it the embeddable chat box. Um, whatever the term you like to use, uh, we understand it, you'll understand it. Um, it. It basically means the live chat widget that sits on your website or within your app. Um, embeddables also include um, the ReMA's light box, which, uh, you know, if you look at this website here that we have up, um, what you're looking at uh, on the bottom right hand corner of this screen is actually the shop box or chat box. Um, and it lives on the bottom right hand corner of your screen by default, and you can change the location when you customize this entire experience. Uh, but we also have a light box option, so instead of having it uh, live at the bottom right hand corner and it follows the customer around, um, the light box actually is just the modal that pops, pops over a, kind of the center area of your website or app, and it can be triggered by any element on your website, either maybe a, li a little bit of text or an image, um, and it could pull up kind of the light box version of this chat box. Okay, so that's also a, a ReMA's embeddable. Um, ReMA's embeddables also refer to embeddable FAQs. So, for example, if I click on this FAQ page here, you'll see that, um, let's go here, ReMA's FAQ. You'll see that this little modal loads and the, the, the ReMA's FAQ is actually embedded in line with your site content or inside your app. Um, so, embeddables are, are, are very important and we're going to cover how to create one, how to customize one, and also how to install it for your um, for your website or for your web app. Okay, so the first thing you want to click on is settings again. Um, this is kind of the, the central hub for where you do everything. So go to settings, and under website integrations, you'll see um, a section called embeddables. So go ahead and click on that. So once you're in the embeddables menu, um, again, if you if you're not Shopify or BigCommerce. Um, you, th this page will be empty, so you'll have to create a new embeddable. If you are um, on Shopify or the BigCommerce platform, an embeddable will be, have been created for you automatically um, when you created your ReMA's account. Um, and the reason we do that is to make installation much easier if you're on Shopify or BigCommerce uh, because we're natively integrated with those two platforms. And if you do see an embeddable here, that most likely means there's a shout box or chat box already living on your Shopify or BigCommerce storefront. And you can simply go in here and edit it and then publish the new changes uh, directly to your website without having to um, do any coding or copy and pasting any JavaScript. Um, but we'll cover that in a special episode um, where we talk about Shopify and BigCommerce in more detail. For this episode, we're just gonna talk about how to you know, straight up create a brand new embeddable and how to install it, okay? So the first thing you wanna click on is uh, create a new embeddable. Okay, and by default, um, this is what things will look like. And you'll remember in episode, um, I believe it was just the previous episode, it was epi episode six, where we kind of showed you how to connect your social media pages or social media accounts. Um, these little icons is what I was referring in that episode. You know, this is called the home screen of the ReMA's chat box or shout box. And you can display your social media icons uh, directly here so customers can have easy access to them. Um, but let's go from the very beginning. Okay, so for getting started, um, this is just a, a, a wizard that you can follow and go through, and it'll ask you questions ba based on what you want. So um, you say, I want a shot box or chat box, okay? Or you can say, I want a light box, um, or I want a direct web page embed, which is referring to just like a regular contact form. So for this one, we're gonna click, I want a shot box, and showing my uh, contact form or chat, right? Or you can say, I want it to show my FAQ instead. So uh, you can click FAQ and this preview will refresh and it'll show you a list of FAQ articles that are available uh, in your ReMA's account. Um, this doesn't mean you, know, you, you only get the FAQ in here. Customers can still click on you know, contact us directly and they can access the chat portion of the, of the chat box. Okay, so for this example, we're just gonna do showing my ReMA's chat and this will refresh again. Okay, so for brand faces, if you've uploaded uh, an icon or an image or an avatar for your staff profiles, um, that's, what we'll, that's what we'll show here, right? Um, you do wanna give your chat box and your brand um, you know, a, a face, right? So 
customers can kind of see who they're talking to and it'll feel more personable that way. Um, if you don't want to use the staff avatars, right, the, the ones that are uploaded here, um, you can upload your own. So right now the, there are two different modes. One is recently active staff users, right? Um, and then, or you can do custom faces, right? And you just can, you can just upload uh, image files and Reamaze will take that and display those images as the icons here, as the brand faces. Okay, so we're just gonna use um, active staff users. I did not upload a staff avatar yet, um, which I'll do probably before the next episode. Um, and then you can give your embeddable a name. So we'll just call this, you know, test embeddable, if I can spell. Okay, so test embeddable, and then go ahead and click next. So here you can customize it a little bit more. Now, by default, the pos positioning is on the bottom right-hand corner. Um, so think of this as your website. Um, you can switch it over to the bottom left-hand corner, right? And it'll pop up on this side. Um, or you can switch to advanced positioning and play around with the pixels until you, you get just the right, you know, height and right positioning uh, between left and right. Um, for this example, we're going to actually go switch back to the simple positioning. I'm gonna do bottom right, okay? And then the shout box trigger is customizable as well. Um, we will we will kind of cover how to change all the text. There are other text um, elements here that you can customize. We'll cover that in another episode. Uh, but for uh, the shout box itse itself, you can change the theme color. So let's say we want a nice kind of green, um, a dark green here. So I'm gonna go choose. Okay, so it's gonna refresh on uh, in real time. Um, and then you can pick between the Reamaze message bubble as the icon. Um, a question mark, uh, plain chat bubbles, or a custom icon. So if you choose custom icon, make sure you just upload an image file, okay? So I'm just gonna stick with the question mark. You can make it a little bit bigger. If you want it like 70 pixels, um, it'll be pretty big. Um, I actually personally prefer like 60. I think 60 is a, right, is a nice size. Um, so 60 is good here. Uh, and the shout box prompt is just referring to the welcome message. Um, so this uh, welcome message kind of greets the customer when they're on your website or inside your app um, and it just kind of shows them that they can chat with you and there's something there that they can action on. So the shop box prompt is customizable as well. So let's say you want to change this messaging to say we're here to chat. Um, let us know if you need any help. Can't type today. Okay. So this will refresh in real time again. Um, and let's say we're here to chat. Let us know if you need any help. Okay, and you can change the notification style as, or the prompt style as well. The default is the is the notification style, which seems to work best for most businesses. Um, if you want something a little bit less intrusive, um, you can do a slide in bubble. Okay, so instead of popping up like that with a sound, it'll just kind of roll in and say and say we're here to chat. Let us know if you have any help, or you can even do a static button. Um, which really works better if you have less text on the prompt itself, right? Um, and you have a few, a few, you know, a fewer options there. So let's go with the notification style here. You can change the prompt delay in seconds and also the prompt duration in seconds. Um, if you don't want it to play a sound, you can get rid of the sound. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next here. Now the contact mode is pretty important, um, and we offer four different contact modes. And this is referring to the contact mode on the customer experience side. Um, so whether or not you want to require the customer to always provide their name and email um, is probably the, the most important element here, right? So if you want to require name and email at all times, um, choose the second option. If you want to require name and email only when your staff are not available, um, pick this option here. And available is actually referring to office hours. Um, and we'll cover that in a later episode. Um, you can look for that video in the the, the, the video list um, next on, on YouTube here. So um, if you just pick that, you can switch between these two options. The third option is probably the most flexible, right? Because it allows the customers to still send a message without providing their name and email. Uh, but we will prompt them for their name and email after their their message has been submitted. If you choose to require name and email at all, at all times, they have to provide the name and email first before being able to submit a message, right? So this one actually allows you uh, the most flexibility, uh, but you will end up talking to maybe some guest customers or guest users, and you know we'll only display it's a, it's a guest user and their IP address, but we won't tell you who they are uh, because the customer has not provided that information. Uh, but basically, after they submit their message, uh, they can click here to enter the contact details. Um, if they don't, they'll just be able to chat with you as a guest. Right? 
Um, if you want, there's also a traditional contact form mode. Um, so instead of kind of having the, the, the more modern experience, you can go, kind of go old school. And there's nothing wrong with old school. Um, contact forms has, has worked for decades, and it's going to continue to work. So if you want a traditional contact form, you can definitely go, go with that option. Um, for now, we're just going to go with required name and email at all times. Okay, and below that are custom contact form fields. And custom contact form fields are important for several different reasons. It allows you to, co uh, to collect more information from the customer beyond their name and email. For example, you can create uh, several different form types. So let's say you want a text field, you can pick from a drop down field, a checkbox, a hidden field if you have some hidden JavaScript that you collect from the customer automatically. Uh, so for example, if you want a drop down field, just add a drop down field and give the field a name and we'll say uh, department, right? And the placeholder will, will be whatever option you want to default them to. So let's say you have customer service as an option, um, technical support, um, shipping maybe. So those three options will be in, it will be part of the drop down menu here. So they can pick from here, uh, but for uh, the placeholder, we do want to have them default to customer service, okay? So this one will actually refresh over to customer service, and they can uh, pick which department they're trying to reach. And this will be sent over to you um, as part of the customer data set um, when they actually message you, right? You can add, uh, you can make a requirement if you want. You can add other form fields, let's say um, a text field, and just have them insert maybe a paragraph long explanation of what's going on. Um, you can have a checkbox and say, you know, uh, subscribe to our newsletter. Um, do that. And you can leave that checked by default. So you can take a look at the preview again. And this should refresh. Okay, subscribe to our newsletter. So if you're happy with that, um, you know, you're not required to use any custom fields if you don't want to. So uh, for this demo, we'll just, we'll just add them. Uh, go ahead and click next when you're done. And then for the customizable hub apps, um, this is actually referring to uh, several different things and it will change over time as we more, add more apps to the home screen. Um, but if you're on Shopify and BigCommerce, um, you actually have access to several different um, hub apps. And those include like you, giving customers the ability to check their order status, right? Um, and to also find information on their order and they can do that directly through an app that's, uh, you know, that's, that's added to the, the chat home screen. Uh, but for right now, if you're just a regular account, you're not Shopify or BigCommerce, you have access to a thing called FAQ Search. Um, you can enable that or disable that. Uh, right now, it's even, if, even though it's enabled, it's not showing anything because we don't have any FAQ articles. Um, and we'll talk about how to add FAQ articles and what you can do with FAQ um, in a later episode. Okay? Um, you can customize the text here, and you can also change the text here. So if you're happy with that, go ahead and click Save. Okay, this is the important part. So once your shout box or chat box has been customized, um, you have to install it somehow. And if you're on BigCommerce and Shopify, again, we support one-click publishing, so no copying and pasting of code. Uh, it just click publish and it'll you know, update to your Shopify or BigCommerce storefront um, in an instant. Uh, if you're not Shopify or, Shopify or BigCommerce, we recommend using Google Tag Manager to install the Reamaze shout box or, or chat box. Um, and you can integrate Google Tag Manager pretty easily. And if you're not familiar with Google Tag Manager, it basically allows um, your developers to install a one-time script onto your website. Uh, and then it allows marketers or you know, customer service people, not basically non-tech people, to publish content to the website without having to touch any of the code. So everything is kind of wrapped in Google Tag Manager. Um, it's a super convenient way for um, reamaze as well because you can actually update you can delete um, uh, shop boxes or any of the embeddable parts of reamaze without having to go into your code base and, and changing everything right so that's the third option is to integrate google tag manager um, but the last way is uh, via manual manual publishing and you'll have to provide this script to your um, developers so they can install it onto your website or web app um, click view instructions and you can actually copy this entire script and send it over to your developers and they should know exactly what to do with it. Um, we give you the option uh, to send the code by email so you can just you can customize this and then send over the code so they can install it for you. Um, we do have instructions, more in-depth inst instructions on how to install. So if you go to reamaze.com, I can't type today, reamaze.com, 
And then if you go to developers or developer, um, and then they do want to start on the installation part. So they will need the base installation, which identifies um, the, 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 the main VMA script. They'll need this part, which identifies the right brand, right? And then there's the basic shop box integration, um, which is just that script. Um, so basically you just uh, install um, this part here, right? And that should get the shop box installed onto, you, onto your site or web app. Uh, so definitely have your developers check out reamaze.com slash developer uh, to get started. Okay, um, so this is uh, episode seven, and we covered you know how to create and customize the Reamaze uh, shop box or chat box, uh, and all the options that are available to you. Um, before we leave, though, um, or move on to the next episode, I do kind of want to show you if you're on Shopify or BigCommerce, we might as well cover it real quick here. Um, if you're on Shopify or BigCommerce and you go to Embeddables, you actually see something here already. Um, for example, let me just go ahead and delete this one so we don't get confused. Okay, so you should see something already here um, that's already installed onto your storefront, right? And this is actually, if you look at, if you look at the, um, the Reamaze demo site, which is on Shopify right now, um, you can see there's something already here installed. Now, if we go through the same process and go ahead and click on edit, um, let's say we will go through this really quickly here. Um, and let's say we'll change this over to red okay, so, or dark. Uh, that's close enough. Red. Um, we'll change this over to some plain chat bubbles, the icon size. Uh, we'll change the, the welcome prompt. Let's just say, um, welcome to our website. Feel free to chat with us now. Okay. Notification style will be that. So we'll click next. Um, require name and email a lot of times. We're not going to do any custom fields. Uh, let's just uh, let's just get rid of this one here, right? Just click on that. Okay, I'm going to go on next. So as I mentioned earlier, you have FAQ search, uh, but for Shopify and BigCommerce, you also have order status check and also show order notes. So you can enable that or disable that. We'll leave that on because we are Shopify and BigCommerce right now for this account. Um, go ahead and click save. And now you'll see this option here, which looks a little bit different than what you see on John Smith Co., right? Which doesn't have Shopify uh, one click publish or Big Commerce one click publish. Um, this one does have Google Tag Manager installed, so there is a publish button here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and publish this directly to Shopify. Okay, and you're going to wait for a little green check mark there and click done. Okay, so technically this is live now, right? So if we go back to our storefront, I'm going to hit refresh and you'll see that the widget will be updated in real time and if I click on it um, the order status check is here past conversations all of our social media icons are available to access um, so if you're on Shopify or BigCommerce it's super easy to get the Reamaze shop box or chat box updated and added um, again and to summarize if you're not on Shopify or BigCommerce do you have to go through the process um, and we recommend installing via Google Tag Manager or sending this code over to your developers and having them follow uh, reamaze.com slash developer uh, to go through the installation process. Okay, so in the next episode, we're going to talk about something else um, that's related to the Reamaze chat box or shop box, um, and that's Reamaze queues. So this gives you a way to automatically engage customers uh, when, you're, when they're on your website or in your app, um, and you can create a, a whole bunch of campaigns uh, with different targeting rules, different messaging patterns. Um, it's going to be pretty epic. So stay tuned, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.